Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming $2,000 Pioneer Open. I'm Tandy, joined by Ross Miriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. We got four rounds in the books, two more Swiss and the top eight to come your way here in just a few. Uh, this round, we're going to be watching streamer Young Dingo, a.k.a. Mikey Bashara, playing that blue-white Lotus deck that we watched in round one. Uh, and he's going to be facing off against Kellen Dragowski on Azorius Spirits, perhaps a really tough matchup. Yeah, this is an interesting one. You know, we saw dingo early in the day play against another creature deck but that was boros convoke about yep. as different of a creature deck as you can get <laughs> yeah, yeah. from azorius spirits uh and presumably you know the azorius spirits deck will like to play against the deck with such a high curve but the modern spirits decks uh i should say current spirits decks <laughs> are uh, a little bit less uh counter spell heavy this one has seven counter spells in the main in four guys, let's snare two lofty denial and a spell pierce. Mm -hmm. My, the interesting dynamic for me is spell queller is oddly bad. <laughs> That's true. Everything has a, a mana value like higher than four, yeah. except for like maybe some supreme verdicts or whatever. The, and supreme verdicts are out of the sideboard. The right. main deck sweepers are all mana value five and higher. It's mm -hmm. two doomscar, three farewell, and two sunfall. So uh, as long as Dragowski can understand that dynamic, I think, and try to get value out of his spell callers early. Uh, I think he should be okay because being much cheaper, like, lower curved, getting to play at instant speed is going to be a really big problem for this Lotus Field deck because it wants to just jam haymakers. Right. And if you do that and allow the Spirits deck to just, you know, work its counter spells and its creatures around that, that's exactly what they want to do. You play into their game plan. So I agree, a tougher matchup, but uh, it's one that Kellen needs to know how to navigate because the one thing about the Spirits deck, it's not as powerful as other decks in Pioneer. So as soon as you make a mistake and let your opponent in and something big resolves, you're like a house of cards. Everything collapses. Yeah, and your deck isn't great at fighting back because you don't have spot removal or anything like that. So it's more just like, do you race or do you lose? Yes. Yeah. And and uh, so the, it's, it's going to be on Kellen to make sure he sequences well and navigates through the various minefields that this Azorius Lotus Field deck can present. All right, so the players are ready in the feature match here. So let's head on down for round number five. Both these players sitting at three and one. A win here likely allows them to draw next round into top eight. A loss likely knocks them out of the tournament. So looks like we have roughly three win and ends playing, and we'll bring you as much of them as we can. We're going to be underway here. Kellen Dragowski on turn one. No play, but shocks with Howl Fountain, so likely a flash creature, and we see Spectral Sailor. Okay, good start. Curious Obsession is the play on turn number two. That's going to start things off with a lot of added pressure, but it's not damage pressure. These extra cards are just going to bury Dingo if he's not careful. I'm not sure if Dragowski had a second land in hand, but they drew Seacrum Coast off of the Curious Obsession. So that is excellent. Okay, Straight Proctor is the play for Dingo. That one not too uh, worrisome, but we are going to go ahead and play Geisalite Snare on it because it can block our 2-2 flyer. Dragowski also wanting to use all of his mana. Finds land number three. Going to get in here with the Spectre Sailor again and draw another card and perhaps deploy some more of those creatures, maybe even Supreme Phantom. Yeah, it looks like the hand is Mausoleum Wanderer, Rattle Chain, Supreme Phantom, and Spell Pierce, and that is an incredible hand. This was an excellent one-lander. Dragowski kept it uh, with the risk, knowing if he drew lands, he was going to have an uh, amazing first few turns, and he hit the lands. If you are Dingo and you saw Kellen's hand, I think you would concede. <laughs> Going to go back Kellen's way, though. Let's see if he can close the game out here. While Dingo's still at 15, we are developing a very difficult-to-beat board and a handful of protection. Here's a three-cost interactive oh, a piece. a ganjo. Shoof. We can give it hexproof, though, so Rattle Chains is yeah. a nice piece of protection here. He has the answer for that still. So this is an attack for four. And we draw a card off Curious Obsession again. Finds another counterspell with Lofty wow. Denial. The game and may be over here before it even starts. This is exactly how you draw it up if you are playing the Azorius Spirits deck. Everything has gone exactly according to plan. And I have no idea how Young Dingo gets back into this. Okay. Probably going to main phase this Wandering Emperor here. But uh, going to give Kellen the ability to untap. That could allow for Spell Quarter to come down and protect, and without a fifth land, maybe that walks the dog Kellen right into a five-mana sweeper from Dingo next turn. Let's see how Kellen wants to play it. Here's the Wandering Emperor. Yeah, and I like using the Queller here instead of the Spell Pierce because Spell Pierce stops the five-mana sweepers while, while Queller does not. Okay, two 
three, is four, seven. five, six, seven. Down to four, and we draw a card. Finds a slip, slip out, out the, the back. back. That even protects the Curious Obsession, so... Wow. Yeah, True. even if Dingo had a Supreme Verdict here, it wouldn't be enough. Impressive stuff from the Azori Spirits deck. Here's Sunfall. Guy Slide Snare. That takes... <laughs> Game number one in favor of Zori Spirits. Dominating performance here. Very lopsided game, that one. And we'll see if Young Dingo can reach to a sideboard for help while he's reaching for it. I'm going to have my main man, Ross, go over what he thinks Dingo's going to be boarding in for this matchup. Okay, so Young Dingo in the sideboard has one Dragonlord Dramoka, two Thought Distortion, two Supreme Verdict, two Narsense Reversal, two Doden's Veto, two Change the Equation, one March of Otherworldly Light, and two Lantern of the Lost. Uh, I like the Dragonlord Dromoka. That's a card that can dominate the battlefield and is uncounterable. Uh, I don't like bringing in a ton of extra counter spells, though Change the Equation can be interesting because the curve is so low on the Spirits deck. Uh, and I do like the Supreme Verdict. You know, it runs afoul of Spell Queller, but getting through all the other counter spells is quite nice. All right, on the other side of things, Kellen Dragowski's Azoria Spirits deck is going to have probably a couple more counter spells to bring in, which could be problematic for the Lotus Field deck. What's he got? Uh, actually, no counter spells in the sideboard, but does have some good options. Uh, I see four copies of Wedding Announcement. That is a very nice one to grind through removal in a slower matchup. Mm -hmm. I also see two copies of Invasion of Gobacon. This is an excellent one in this matchup. You can, you know, take a key card with the front half, and then once you tr uh, attack the battle down and transform it, now it gives you protection from a lot of those sweepers. Notably not the exile ones. Yes. So no Sunfall yeah. uh, and no is Farewell, there, yeah. but Supreme Verdict and Doomscar you have protection from. It also just keeps pumping your creatures so you don't... If for, it allows you to not extend into a sweeper at all. You know, two creatures on the battlefield, and that are more than enough to uh, clock the opponent effectively. Uh, lastly, I see a copy of Tokasia's Welcome. This is another interesting card, um, you know, that could generate a lot of card advantage. Yeah, very similar to Wedding Announcement, but instead of putting more pressure on the board, it just draws some more cards. It's a, an interesting one. Normally, we don't see it because they're so similar, but yeah. Wedding Announcement here. But it has additional synergy with the Spirit's deck. You know, it says this ability triggers only once each turn, but it can trigger once on your turn Good if you call. play a creature on your main phase. And then if you play a creature with Flash on your opponent's turn, it'll trigger again. So you can get two cards in a turn cycle if you sequence your spells correctly. Yeah, interesting. I've never even thought about it like that in the Spirit's deck. So, cool sideboard plan maybe for Kellen coming with those powerful three-cost enchantments. We'll see if Dingo is able to, A, beat the plan of Curious Obsession, and B, beat the cyborg plan of Wedding Announcement. Could be a tough road to hoe, but uh, if anyone can do it, the streamer Young Dingo can. Yeah. Make sure to follow his Twitch channel at Young Dingo on Twitch.tv. He streams uh, most most days, honestly, when he's not traveling. Being on the play will certainly help here against the Tempo deck. I also see two copies of Shark Typhoon in Dingo's list. That's a really tough card for the Spirits deck because you can't counter it. It's a flying blocker for your creatures. You always have to be cognizant of it, especially against a deck that can generate a lot of mana, like the Azorius Lotus Field deck. Uh, and it's just a really difficult one to play through. So, Turn to Strict Proctor from Dingo. No play on one from Kellen Dragowski. Likely a handful of Rattle Chains and other twos. Maybe some counter spells. We'll see if Dingo has the payoff for the Strict Proctor with Lotus Field. Going to go digging with Impulse. If Kellen Dragowski wants, he could counter this. I would recommend it, sir. Yeah, I can't counter the Lotus Field, so got to counter things like Impulse if you want to stop it. But, you know, Kellen also, I don't think has a third land, but has a Curious Obsession. So it's really valuable for him to get a creature down this turn so he can obsess it next turn and start drawing cards and hit his land drops. Okay, Dingo digging. Top four. Did he find the Lotus Field? He puts one face down. If he does, it's going to give him a huge burst of mana. He doesn't. Here's an Irrigated Farmland. Trick Proctor not going to attack. It's not really the game we want to play. And here's Spectral Sailor. Okay. Well, it looks like we did have a land. It was just a pathway. We found another land off the top. Uh, interesting that we went with the Sailor, not using our mana as effectively. Could have played a Rattle Chains, which isn't that effective in the face of the Proctor anyway. Yep. And if we obsess a... 
uh, two one. It attacks into the Proctor quite well. Ooh, we have Kellen Dragowski having his Curious Obsession to creature blocked for the first time apparently, and he went to draw a card from it, dealing combat damage to the creature. But unfortunately for him, it only triggers if you dealt combat damage to the player. Yeah, getting uh, a little ahead of himself. We there. do know the card; it didn't touch his hand, so we'll likely be able to put that back and shuffle the deck, and then we'll likely get a warning for looking at extra cards. Yeah. But uh, other than that, it's going to be a pretty easy fix. Got to think that Kellen just didn't know that Strict Proctor had flying. Because, <laughs> you know, if he would have played Rattle Chains, I assume, had he known that. Because now this 2-2 two -two gets completely brick-walled by the Proctor. All right. So, going to explain the situation to the head judge who came over to take a peek. And uh, we're going to just, you know, basically say this is what happened and... We may end up putting a random card combined back on top of the deck from the hand and the card drawn in case it was not 100% uh, to be a unique card. But I think both players agree that that was the card, and I, I would agree as well. So we're going to shuffle the deck after putting it back. The Spectral Sailor did attack, so we keep the Curious Obsession around, but we don't get to draw the card. And uh, Kellen Dragowski likely going to pass back to Dingo with two mana up to protect with... Geistly Snare, maybe a Lofty Denial. Yeah, Kellen, Kellen still has a solid hand here, but the Proctor is going to be really difficult to get around, and the fact that he slipped up by putting the Curious Obsession on a Spectral Sailor means that it might get dif be difficult to get around it. Uh, he's going to need to find one of his uh, Lords, those, the Supreme Phantoms. Having that next turn with the fourth land to be able to continue to hold up counter spells with it uh, will be very effective. Odawara pickup from Dingo can't be countered, but can be semi-countered via Hexproof. Here's a rattle change. I wonder if Dingo's going to go ahead and bounce the Spectral Sailor with the Curious Obsession, and he does. He's going to put that back in hand, and the Curious Obsession goes to the graveyard. Yeah, very good use of the Ottawara. The Rattle Chains wasn't going to be able to protect that creature most of the time anyway because of the, the Strict Proctor, but... Kellen shocks here. First damage of the game, down to 18. We'll see if he's able to get some pressure here. Here's Supreme Phantom. That allows the Rattle Chains to rumble for three. Dingo going to take it down to 17. And I do see a Shacklegeist in hand. Decided to leave up Lofty Denial instead. Shacklegeist is one of the cards that does help you uh, navigate around Shark Typhoon. Mm -hmm. You can leave two creatures back when you're attacking and then just tap it before blocks. Man, now I'm just trying to think of ways that this Spirits deck could stop Shark Typhoon. And the best one I can come up with is Nimble Obstructionist. I guess you could also just play some unsummons or whatever, some yeah. kind. Sometimes you slip out the back. That's true. All right, here's a Teferi. Here, Dominara is going to meet a Lofty Denial. Now we're going to go back to Dragowski's way. We can attack for a decent amount here. Dingo, unlikely to chump block, can just bounce off the Supreme Phantom and take three again. Spellclaw the pickup for Kellen. That could stop one of Dingo's cards next turn if it's a cheap one, but uh, we know most of them are pretty expensive. Yeah, and we're at the point of the game where Dingo can just start haymakering them, even without a Lotus Field. I do see a six land for Dingo, <laughs> but we're going to start off here with a Teferi. Hero Dominaria, the five mana Planeswalker. Do we have an answer? No, it's going to draw a card. That's great news for Dingo fans. We have a land to play for turn as well, and then we get to untap two during the end step to have a little bit of protection. We'll see if Kellen wants to bite. Two creatures come down with Spectral Sailor. We can also play the Tapper here if we wanted to as well, because it has Flash from the Rattle Chain. Yeah, but... could have played that Shacklegeist and gotten through this Proctor. And now, uh, this is still enough to take down the Teferi, assuming there's no more interaction from Dingo. Because a block on the Rattle Chains with the Proctor, which is the highest power creature, still leaves five coming across. Okay, Kellen here. Gonna get Frisky attacking this Teferi more than likely, but... Could decide to ignore it and just send everything face. The Proctor can't trade for anything. We're going to be taking 2, 4, 5 at the very least if we chump block the Rattle Chains. But more than likely, we're going to take 3, 4, 5, 6 down to 8. Yeah. There's another awkward part about not playing the Shacklegeist. You know, one, if you tap down the Proctor, you could get some damage at the Teferi, some at Dingo. And continue to get through the life total there. Two, against a Sweeper... Shacklegeist is the last creature you want to leave in your hand because it doesn't have flash by itself. Right. So once the Rattle Chains leaves the battlefield, if you know, should it to a sweeper, 
you can't then develop your battlefield again on the end step, which is one of the big advantages of playing the Spirits deck over traditional aggro decks. You can recover from sweepers on your opponent's end step uh, and minimize the tempo loss from them. Okay, so Teferi down and Kellen Dragowski going to pass it back. We saw Sunfall as a pickup here off of the uh, Impulse, I think. Yeah, I think there was a second one also drawn for turn. Okay. See how Dingo wants to navigate yeah. this. Do you, do you want to sneak in your cheeky point, or do you want to have a blocker back in case your sweeper gets countered? This is the world's most ambitious attack, <laughs> but I think it's going to work. Yeah, I think the hand is Shackle Guy, Spell Queller, and I'm not 100% sure what the last one is. Yeah, it's one of those black and white cards. It looks like Geislet Snare, and that's going to take care of... That's a Supreme Verdict. That wasn't the Sunfall. Unfortunately for Kellen Dragowski, his inexperience, <laughs> perhaps biting him here in Verdict, going to take out everything. Even has the Spell Queller in hand to stop the Verdict, but just bit hard on the wrong interactive piece, and Young Dingo... Breathing a sigh of relief. Gotta know what your opponent's cards do. Especially when you're playing this Spirits deck. Look, mistakes happen, you know. And uh, it's it's pretty clear to me that Dragowski likely doesn't have... Uh... Oh, that is true. The Queller doesn't work against the Proctor. Oh, right, so, right, right, right. Uh, But we still threw away a Counterspell. Right. Geisla Snare so. on an uncounterable Supreme Verdict. You know, we did see him earlier uh, try to draw a card off the Curious Obsession when it didn't connect on the player. So perhaps Kellen is uh, a little bit newer to the Pioneer format. I don't like to judge too harshly on folks, especially when they're under the bright lights in the feature yeah. match area. But now the test is, you know, can you mentally recover? Right. And are he's you got... going to get down on yourself after making these mistakes, or are mm -hmm. you just going to buckle down and say, okay, you know, the mistake is done. Let's play as well as we can from now on. You know, you're still up a game. Even if you lose this one, you've got game three on the play. Yeah, but the psychic damage is real. <laughs> yes, it is definitely real. <laughs> All right, end of turn, we're going to play Rattle Change. Does Dingo have an answer? Doesn't seem like. We're going to go back Dragowski's way. We still have that spell core, so we can protect from another Supreme Verdict. Looks like we also drew a Supreme Phantom, so we yeah. can play that and rumble a bit, but it might be a little dangerous. Yeah, I you know especially because the Phantom can get played at instant speed with the Rattle Chains too. You don't want to get too greedy and just force through damage at this point. Your opponent's a 14. You're not at that point of the game where you need the two damage that desperately. Yeah, normally you do that when you're pushing for lethal over one turn or two turns, and even with playing the Supreme Phantom this turn, it's not quite lethal next turn, so. Here comes an attack for four. There we go. Dingo down to ten. And it, it looks like another Supreme Verdict in hand for Dingo, yeah. The, what we thought were Sunfalls were just a, a different art of Verdict. Okay, so Verdict here. Uh, this is a farewell, so this is actually going to get around the spell queller, and both the creatures are going to be gone. Do we want to play the spell queller just to start getting something going? It's been certainly reasonable, but going to be punished by the supreme verdict left over in Dingo's hand, which is the last one in the deck. Yep, we're going to get spell queller into play. Supreme Phantom follows, and we're going to attack for three. Dingo down to seven. Kellen Dragowski, light on resources, but uh, Dingo, light on life. We'll see if uh, the sweeper effect comes down here and uh, how Dragowski navigates the next few turns. And just a Hallowed Fountain drawn for Dragowski, so going to need some help from the top of his deck here to try to get the last seven points through. But it's not like young Dingo is flush with a ton of stuff. He does have that haul of the Storm Giants, so he can just start... Uh, Crashing in for seven, and yeah, looks like he that's what he's going to do. Smoosh. He also has a change of equation, I think, in hand, which can counter the majority of Dragowski's plays. And with Dragowski on top deck mode, I think it's just a, a nice little nod to getting aggressive in spots where you know you have most of your outs covered. And even if they draw something else, it's not even that bad. Yeah. At this point, you know, now that you can attack Helen to three, once he draws a creature, it's just chump blocking. You have him in the abyss. There's nothing like collecting company to really pull him ahead at this point. So I, I don't think there's a draw that gets him back into it. Curious Obsession certainly won't. Okay, so Dingo ties it up one to one. If you're a Dingo fan, you love to see it. Dragowski though, with or with that big punt earlier, and uh, gonna have to rally back and try to get his head back in the game. You could see his physical mannerisms changed. Right, it's almost like you could feel the heat radiating off of him from being flush with perhaps embarrassment, but you just got to rally back from that and you got to say, okay, we still have one game left. I got to put my all into it. Yep. We all make mistakes. It's what you do after them. 
that is really going to count. Uh, and that's what's going to count here. You got one game, you're on the play. You obliterated Dingo in game one on the play. So you know your deck has some good draws that can get you there. You know, just make sure that you uh, mulligan well. Don't tilt off and keep a bad seven. Uh, and just, you know, navigate these games a little bit more carefully. All right, I believe... Hmm. I, I can't remember exactly who wrote it, but I think it was Paul Vitor Domodorosa. But it was uh, something to the effect of playing through your mistakes to the best of your ability, uh, making the next correct play. And it had to do with uh, not playing your land before playing a spell, and then having that spell hit with a counter spell like Mana Leak, and then holding on to the land out of embarrassment because you don't want your opponent to know that you made a mistake. And Paulo's, you know whole thing in that scenario was just play your land. Yeah. Keep playing the game. Don't put yourself behind on resources because you don't want to show to your opponent that you made a punt or whatever. Yeah. All you can do is play the rest of the game as well as possible. Right. Make the next right play. Okay. Looks like there was a mulligan from Kellen here, but his six looks solid. I see an obsession, a couple lands. It's like a shackle geist and a rattle chain. So maybe no one drop creature, but has the ability to have potentially turn three obsess a creature plus protect it with rattle chains. Okay, we're underway here. Both players at 20. Just a little bug in the system on 21 life. We're going to lead off here with a shackle geist, the two mana 2 2 flyer, allowing for a little bit of pressure and perhaps a little bit of. Uh, trickiness by tapping down Trick Proctor at some point. And the Proctor here, once again, an excellent draw, but we have a two-power creature to obsess, so we can attack into it, but the Rattle Chains will no longer protect. That looks like a Geist Light Snare. Yeah, and we can play it for one mana here, and so I think that's what's going to happen. Kellen Dragowski firmly uh, in the lead. No no third land. I like playing the Mausoleum Wanderer here. I, there's no big spell that you're going to need to answer with a uh, with the Geist Light Snare. Oh, what do you I'm, do here? Oh, I would wander it oh, every I would time. Wander it too. He's digging hard for something. You you got to keep the lotus fields off the battlefield, especially once you the proctor's already there. That's just so much mana. It's going to turn off your guy sight snare and the wanderer. And it's not like the wanderer is attacking because of the proctor. Right. Okie doke. So Dingo finds something he likes. Hey. Does he have the lotus field? Looks like another impulse. So didn't find the punisher card in the lotus field. As a hinge gate pathway, and we're going to pass back. Dragowski here finds a slip out the back that can save him from a sweeper later on, and it also, thanks to the phasing mechanic, can save the Curious Obsession as well. So I don't think there's a way to play two spirits to be able to attack with the Wanderer. So yeah, just attack with the Shacklegeist. Now we can play a second Wanderer. Yep, and hold up Geist Light Snare as well. And, and hold up Shackle Guys tapping the Proctor to start getting in with everything. So we'll have Snare up, we'll have multiple Wanderers, we'll have an answer to a blocker. We have still out the looks back pretty for good. Verdict as well. Yeah, we have Slip out the back. Ooh. Decides to play nothing, likely has something he can play at flash yeah, speed. Has a Rattle Chains for sure, but that Rattle Chains is not going to trigger for anything any value because of the Proctor. No, but it allows you to hold up protection, doesn't force you to overextend to the board any, and then during the inseb you can just play it. Ah. Mausoleum Wonder triggers do trigger from yeah. things entering the battlefield, so it turns out Strict Proctor does stop that buff as well. So Strict Proctor just so much trickier and more useful than I guess I really even thought. Yeah. We can use Slip Out the Back to take it out for a turn. Oh, Dragowski missed the could have activated Shackle Guys on the end step, so we did miss that. All right, Dragowski with the third land though now has a few more options at his disposal. Attacks with the Mausoleum Wanderer. If this is Supreme Phantom, <clears throat> counter unless you paid two. Oh no, he's getting yeah. the bad news that we just got from our director and. Uh, we can pay two and then keep our Mausoleum Wanderer alive, or we can just let it die and hold up some protection. I'm prone to let it die here. Yeah, I'm also team let it die. We draw a card off the Shacklegeist. I think it's just fine. We we can't afford to do that, but here's Odawara Ugh. to bounce, and do we have another piece of protection? But even Rattle Chains doesn't stop it because of the Strict Proctors. So. Oh, yep, we have Slip Out the Backs, so that protects it and keeps the Obsession around. It means that any Sweeper 
it's protected from because it won't phase in until your next turn. But you're not drawing a card. You're not dealing any damage. Dingo needs a supreme verdict here if he wants to take out it, these creatures. It also means we can't tap the Proctor on the end step because the Shaco Geist is not on the battlefield. How long does something say slipped out the back for till the beginning of your next turn? Yes. Okay, cool. If it'll phase back in. All right. So but it comes back before you untap effectively or before your upkeep. So you you can attack with it. I see. Dingo, tap and five. Fairy, maybe? Seems like. Shields are mostly down. We can use that to minus on an opposing creature, or we can just draw a card and untap some lands. He's reaching for the one, so that's likely a minus. All right, going to draw instead. Get to untap two. I saw a discontinuity poking around over there. Can't really do much with it here, but could be good later on. Back Dragowski's way. Draw for turn. It's another Geist Light Snare, it looks like. So the hand is still solid. Um, the problem here is this Teferi. <laughs> All right, we're going to tap your Strict Proctor. Dingo says that's fine. Attack for three. Teferi going to take... Or for four, excuse me. Yeah, we got a counter on the Shaco Geist now. Do we cash in our Wanderer now? Apparently not. Nope. Yeah, sent the Mutabald in as well to finish off the Teferi. But uh, Kellen really valuing holding up multiple pieces of protection here. We know about two Geist Snares, I believe. Yeah. You know, Dingo hasn't really given him an opportunity to use them. Uh, the one turn that the Teferi came down was the turn Drakowski was uh, tapped low. Yeah, unfortunately, the uh, Strict Proctor just ruining all of Dragowski's plans on that turn. Yeah. Not not realizing that the Proctor was going to uh, stop the Wanderer. Also not tapping it on the end step at the first opportunity. All of those things, once again, just sort of cascading it into more and more problems for the Spirits deck. As I said before the match, like this is not a deck that is forgiving. You know, because it, it's a bunch of underpowered cards. You get ahead of your opponent. You stop their interaction with you because you know their interaction is going to be very good. And it, we've pulled this Spellqueller up, but Spellqueller is going to get countered by the Proctor too. Yeah, this is maybe a little bit of bait from Dingo, but Kellen here might walk into this trick Proctor trigger once again. It's a, an invisible trigger, and uh, it's something that you don't really think about when you're playing games most of the time. Even we missed it earlier, so, you know, it's difficult to navigate. We, we've got a Rattle Chains, though. I, I'm inclined to let this resolve. We can re if we can resolve this Mausoleum Wanderer, uh, not Rattle Chains, uh, Shaco Geist, so hmm, we could have animated the Mutavault and tapped it, and we have two spirits. We could have tapped down one of these Proctors. Dragowski, you know, playing a little too quick, not realizing the power of this Shaco Geist. Yeah, it could have been a, a nice way to remove some of these blockers, but he sees these plays just like a quarter turn too late or half a turn too late sometimes, and ultimately these minor mistakes, playing a little too quickly, adding up for some percentage points for Dingo. We'll see if Dingo is able to capitalize on these minor mistakes and maybe Kellen can pull it out anyway. Lining up a big attack. Really can only attack with the, the Shaco guys still. Yep. There it comes. Are we attacking Deferi or are we attacking upstairs? Well, Dingo says, I don't care who you're attacking. We're going to cast Discontinuity. This seems like a pretty easy counterspell for Kellen. On the guy slice and air, especially if, uh, well, no matter what, if you if you're attacking to fairy, you want to continue pressuring it. This forces a chump block, and if you're going face, you know you want the extra card. So, all right, passing the turn. Okay, so this is a big turn. If Dingo doesn't do anything of relevance, we're going to be able to tap down hopefully the stir the Proctor and have a big attack. I do see a Doom Scar, and yeah, Doom Scar is going to resolve through a Geist Light Snare at this point. Well, we do have the Mausoleum but Wanderers, the Wanderers as well. too. Okay, that'll still limit the attack from Dragowski on the way back. Right. Dingo thinking through his options has a grip full thanks to that Teferi being in play for multiple turns. 
You can see Dragowski struggling here to defend against the mana ramping and the big sweepers and even the planeswalker and even Strict Proctor all causing him some troubles. Got a Hallowed Fountain coming in untapped. Seems like. Yeah. Nice shock. Both players reaching for the life totals. All right. Here's Sunfall. Three, four, five. We have four mana at the ready, so we can pay for Geist Knight and one of the Mosley Mortars, but we can do all three and stop it. This is interesting. So, yeah, you want to snare first and force three mana to be paid. Mm -hmm. And fully tap Dingo out. So once we pay these three, now you want to use the Wanderers to tap down the Proctor. Do that first, then use the Wanderers to fully counter this. At which point you can... Okay, so we're still gonna, Dingo's still going to have two lands untapped, so... Yeah, the power of the Teferi now that the Lotus Field is on the battlefield. Oh, and we're just sacking now, so we still can't use Shacklegeist. Well, I believe this is just inexperience in the format and maybe even with the Azori Spirits deck. The things you're talking about, you know, you're a, an advanced player. Uh, and I don't want to speak to Kellen's, you know, uh, how experienced he is in this format and with this deck. But th it's very obvious to us that he is missing these things, but it might not be obvious to him. Yeah. The Shacklegeist, normally a card that you think of as an anti-aggro measure. Mm -hmm. This is a control deck, but... The Stern Proctors, uh, every game, have been incredibly annoying. Right. Uh, and Dragowski, this game, had the means to play through it and has not utilized this card to the fullest. All right, so we are sending in Rattle Chains and the Shacklegeist, and Strict Proctor are going to eat the Rattle Chains and have Teferi go down, probably. Or do you keep the Teferi around? Interesting that the Mutavault didn't come through. Well... Has spell caller in hand, and uh, oh. maybe another rattle chain. So maybe just looking to deploy some more threats here on the instep. Not sure. Rattle chains. You have enough mana now to pay for the proctor, so that's good in case there's a spot removal spell here from Dingo. Spent all that time to beat up Teferi, only to have him show his dirty oh. face again. Does Dingo go for the minus though? I don't know. If he does, he might get bit. Nope, gonna drop. All right, here comes Hingegate Pathway. We'll see if we can... Well, I actually thought I saw a discontinuity over there, so maybe Dingo has big plans for the next few turns. It's funny, discontinuity is actually kind of sicko against Spirit sometimes. If they on your intercept play a creature or something, you can just pay two for discontinuity and end your turn, which effectively counters the spell. Yeah, and uh, you get the discount that way, so... Uh, Kellen going to want to respond to the Teferi on tap if he has on tap effects or end of turn effects. Besides not to. Another land drawn here. Looks like Hingegate Pathway from Kellen. Bless you. And uh, we're going to play it on blue side. Hi, Ross. Quick, without looking, what's the back side of Hingegate Pathway? It is... Um... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, our director is Hingegate Pathway. Mistgate. I Mist just game? yeah. Okay. All right, you got it. Ross, you're a strong mage. Also, yeah. I've I've played this deck before, Todd. I've registered these cards. Look, you don't have to register Mistgate Pathway though. You don't have to register Hingegate. All I'm saying is this is very difficult to name both halves of every pathway. Yeah. All 20 pathways. Uh, that's a that's a Tall, tough challenge. Yeah. All right. Uh, no other play from Dragowski. Just attacking the Teferi for four. You have to imagine Dingo's very happy with that. We're going to go back his way. Boatload of mana at his disposal. And draw a card off the Teferi and say go. Has discontinuity on the upkeep if he wants it. But yeah. uh... Just main phase copied a Lotus Field with a stage and then untapped now the two Lotus Fields with the Teferi. So now the, the full mana engine online. All of Kellen's counter spells are basically dead. Uh, and Dingo has plenty of, of gas left in the tank. So I think it's all over but the crying here. Okay, big attack for four. Let's see if Dingo wants to do something about it. Here's the Wandering Emperor. We're gonna. That's a March of Otherworldly Light. Oh, excuse me. Rat Rattle chains can still stop it though. All right, and uh, we're gonna counter unless you pay two. Counter paid for. March is down. Chump block coming. Yeah, and now we've got the Doom Scar in hand. That'll clear everything except the Mutavault. 
Tons of mana for Dingo. A lot of payoffs in hand, a lot of sweepers. It's very active. Looks like we just found a Sunfall, too, so we can cast that one if you want. That'll create a blocker that'll trade with the Muta Vault. Right. Protect. And I think Kellen sees the writing on the wall. His body language is not one of someone who feels like they're still in the game. And Sunfall does exile those creatures. I don't think it matters. His deck doesn't really do a lot from the graveyard, but we'll try to get that fixed uh, real quick, just in case it does come up. Every time I say it, I don't think it matters. It ends up mattering. Yeah. I uh, don't think that, yeah. In in the spirit stack, I definitely don't think there's anything there. And... All right. Going to go back Kellen's way. Draws for turn. Has a Muta Vault, but it's looking awkward in the face of the 2-2 two -two Sunfall token. That Incubator can flip into a 2-2 two -two at any point and block. Looks like an Ash Ketchum, but uh, it's a Phyrexian. Here's Supreme Phantom for Kellen. Has Spellcaller at the ready. Discontinuity, though. That one can't be Spellcaller. And that one's going to end the turn and remove the Supreme Phantom from the stack. That, uh, again, exiles it. So that Supreme Phantom should not be in the graveyard. <sighs> Somebody yes. pointed it out. There we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Discontinuity also gets exiled. Can't recur that one. Got to go back Dingo's way. Gripful. Active Planeswalker. We'll see. How long it takes him to win the game, but we know that he is very, very likely to win. Yeah, there's a hall on the battlefield, so it shouldn't take that long. And yeah, Dingo firing it up immediately. Seven ball, corner pocket. Anyway, this nine, is a nine ball. Two turn so clock. Is, yeah. not even jumping into block. Kellen throwing up the white flag here. We've oh. got another march in hand, so. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and march it before block. So this is still a nine-point swing coming through, and Kellen going to be half his life total cut now, and he's got just Invasion of Gobakan and Immuta Vault at the ready. We'll see if his top of his deck is kind at all. Why did the Spellcaller come back? It was marched. Marched. Yeah, that's exiled. There we go. <laughs> Look, I know that there's a lot of exile zones in Magic, but that one just goes to the regular one. Kellen, all your creatures are exiled. Just, just keep that in mind. We'll make another Lotus Field, sure. Or no, wait. That's making... I don't know. Is there a Castle Ardenvale over there, perhaps? Yeah. Maybe that's the funky-looking land that's been there for about 19 turns. I think you're right. I think that's a castle. Yeah, it's one of the uh, cool treatments. Mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings reprint. And packs it in. Kellen Dragowski defeated Young Dingo. Moves to 4-1 and one with Azorius Lotus Field. Kellen Dragowski can't take any more taps than that. And uh, a really well-navigated game from Dingo. Unfortunately for Kellen, a few mistakes. Oh, I'm just laying back like nothing. <laughs> Man, give me a, a two-second countdown or something, Director. Dang, I look like I'm lounging in the, the hookah bar, you know? <laughs> that's, that's what we're doing. Oh, yeah. Well, we are just hanging around and watching people play Magic and talking about it. And, you know, it's a nice job, if I'm yeah. being honest. You know, uh, really the story of that match is, you know, is what I talked about from the beginning. It was on Kellen to navigate very tightly, uh, you know, sort of got down on himself after a couple of those mistakes in Game 2. Never really recovered, it seemed like, mentally in Game 3. Uh, continued to make, you know, small mistakes, not realizing what he can do with the Shacklegeist or exactly how much the Strict Proctor was going to affect his own deck synergies. Uh, and, uh, you know, it, we'll, we will we'll never know, you know, what could have happened if, if he sequenced well, but uh, hopefully he takes it as a learning experience and uh, comes back stronger the next time for it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so that's going to do it for round number five. When we come back, we'll have... Uh, hopefully a couple of uh, win and ends to bring you. Uh, there is some chance that the matches we watch next round will be from players who are mathematically eliminated from contention, but uh, we do have to play the last round no matter what. Uh, we're going to be hopefully watching. Well, I don't know what we're going to do. We'll just see how the matches play yeah, out. We're going to bring you as many win and ends as we possibly can. Yes. Uh, so round number six coming in just a few uh, from the Apex Gaming Home Store in Caldwell, Ohio. I'm Tandy. That's Ross Miriam, and we'll be right back.